all things are subject to interpretation. The one that prevails is a function of power and not truth. The reason why the world has remained in this perpetual imbalance is because people feel they can use money and manipulate others. It has been there from the time of slavery and up to now when it got to colonialization and now indirect colonialization. Those who have the resources, they continue to control the rest of us. My name is Michael Teungwa David. I'm the founder and the executive director of the Global Initiative for Food Security and Ecosystem Preservation. Nearly all the fossil fuels exploration in the continent of Africa is exported to global north countries. It is institutional that you continue to keep the continent of Africa in a very backward situation. I grew up in a rural community, grew up farming, and now a lot of things have changed. The science is clear that Africa contributes less than 5% to global climate emission. But we are the most impacted. The energy situation in Nigeria is really poor for a country of over 200 million people. We are producing within 5,000 megawatts of electricity. Definitely, it cannot power the country. A typical example is in the Niger Delta of Nigeria. That is the most polluted area in the world in terms of fossil fuels. Check out the lives of the people in the Niger Delta. Has it improved? No. I am not talking about the destruction on the biodiversity. Those environment cannot be rehabilitated. Never again shall this beautiful land experience the oppression by one or another. Our continent is so beautiful. We must preserve this beautiful land that we have. It is our heritage. If we allow the fossil fuels companies to destroy this beautiful land, this heritage that we have, where else would we call home? Imagine yourself walking through a forest trail from a long day at work. The wind blowing, the trees, you have a smooth transition across. You feel better because nature has healing powers. It has aesthetic values that cannot be paid for. Money cannot buy it.
but with increasing interest on money, things have gradually changed. Nature is being sold out. I am an environmental and climate justice advocate. I have over 10 years working within the environmental space with a focus on women and young people in Cameroon. When I come to communities, I spend two weeks sometimes with them. It helps me to fit myself into their context and to get to understand what they go through and have discussions with them. When the oil and gas companies come to Cameroon, they have their agreements with the government. Since they have a higher permission, they go ahead to set up their structures without thinking of the damages that it might cause on the communities. And this has affected crop production, it has affected water, and it has also affected health of community members. What will cause some one year, some night? Would your year something explode? So that smooth will come on, continue, come on like three to four days before the smooth be cool. Now why that way the smooth will be over, make it over, mm -hmm. settle for place them. So when rain one come, it will come with strong, strong breeze, and then it will destroy it in there. I remember my mommy tell me, say, man, no come under that rain, no man, no come under that rain. Yes, not true. I saw it there too for a week for a year. Mm -hmm. That time they say, that rain before, so it will get sick. The people who are suffering the most from the impact of oil and gas are being neglected. These are the people who are producing the food in the country. These are the people who are protecting the forest in the country. Mm -hmm. So instead they eat with this one. We need justice. Are you right? Anyone you been like? I'm Halan to talk or sang out of this. Oh, on compte près de 200 îlots dans le delta du Salo. Et dans chaque îlot, il y a des groupements de femmes et d'hommes qui ont préservé leur environnement jusque-là. C'est un travail que nous documentons pour voir à quel point le travail qu'elles font peut aider à freiner les effets du changement climatique. Tu as vu l'avancement de la mer Oui. Tu as vu Ça, c'était une zone cultivable. Cultivable, ok. On faisait la riziculture ici. Tout seul. C'était des rizières. Jusqu'ici. Okay. Et tu as vu, ouais. avec l'avancement, le changement climatique. On a perdu des terres. Notre zone, on a 45% de terres salées actuellement. Wow. Ouais, on a 45% de terres salées. Je peux dire que les femmes ont perdu peut-être leur côte, côté agriculture. Au sein de l'ONG Lumière Synergie pour le Développement, je suis chargée de la communication et du plaidoyer. Les côtes africaines sont très riches en, en pétrole et gaz. Si on prend le cas du Sénégal, ça traverse le nord du Sénégal jusqu'au point où nous sommes, c'est le delta du Salo. On entend dire que le Sénégal est, est riche en pétrole maintenant. La communication qui est faite autour de cela, c'est que le pays va se développer, les communautés vont devenir riches. Et quand du jour au lendemain, on a des projets implantés par des gouvernements et des compagnies qui viennent pour détruire euh, toutes ces ressources naturelles euh, d'une importance capitale, ils se sentent exclus, leur travail est, est gâché par, euh, par tout cela sans qu'ils aient leur mot à dire. 
Euh, voilà, euh, c'est ça le problème qui n'est. Parce que la première chose que le gouvernement a à faire, il venait devant la population pour parler avec les populations impactées. Euh, vraiment, on n'a pas fait ça. Ils ne sont pas venus. On, nous, sont, nous ne sommes pas venus okay. au village oui. pour euh, parler avec les gens. Et ils ne prennent pas le fait que vous ayez des craintes par rapport à... Nous avons des craintes. Parce Mais eux, a vu... ils ne sont pas venus en parler avec non, vous. Non, non, non. Mais nous avons des difficultés tellement que mmh. s'il y a une seule faille mmh. sur le poteau, nous avons des problèmes. Okay. Parce qu'on n'est plus... La mer n'aura plus de poissons, ni de suites, de moules. Ça va impacter nos activités. Les mangroves, euh, en premier lieu, c'est les lieux d'habitat et de reproduction des poissons. Les mangroves euh, préviennent euh, l'avancée de la mer. Et du coup, contre la salinisation des terres agricoles euh, qu'on peut retrouver dans, dans la région. Donc, euh, si jamais l'environnement est, est détruit et les mangroves euh, sont détruites, elles n'auront plus de, de moyens de subsistance. Donc, euh, les deux aspects économiques et environnementaux vont ensemble. C'est sur ces étendues de terre-là que nous voyons que la culture euh, visière se faisait et c'est là où se trouvait le village euh, bien avant qu'il y ait l'avancée de la mer. Et vu que c'est une île, ça ne va pas s'arranger. Maintenant, si tu ne penses pas à l'après-exploitation du pétrole, comment ton pays pourra s'en sortir dans l'avenir C'est ça la, la question. Raya Famau Ahmed, she is an activist from the organization Sauti Awanake, that would be Swahili for the voice of the women. Raya has been at the forefront of her organization's campaign against the building of that coal plant in Lamu. She joins me now from Nairobi. What do you feel about the outcome? Of course, this is your home that was being discussed. Ah, I'm feeling very happy, very happy. I feel like flying, I feel like crying, I feel like, I feel happy, I feel happy. One of the things that we wanted is uh, to the, the, yeah, the, the license to be cancelled and at least uh, we, we, we won in that area. But we are happy that uh, at least the, the court has uh, given us its ears as the community of Lamu and Kenya in general. Right, and let's talk about your community, Raya. Lamu is a World Heritage Site and there are things that our forefathers have been preserving for centuries. When they get into power, they tend to overuse the power that is bestowed on them and they forget their people whom they are representing. This is the government that we were petitioning and it was the only first case here in Lamu where the community head came together, formed a coalition of organizations and uh, they petitioned the government. So of course people were scared, but uh, we felt like we need to help the people and the government has to stop this project because they wanted to build the coal power plant uh, nearby the sea. My name is uh, Raya Famao Ahmed and I'm the executive director and founder of Lamu Women Alliance. 80% of Lamu people depend on the sea. It is the main source of income to a lot of Lamu people. And when you are saying that you want to implement a project that is very destructive, that is going to pour harmful and poisonous substances, as Lamu people, we really said no for that. If they are to bring uh, development, 
then they need to bring sustainable development. We don't want them to bring projects that will displace people, that will cause harm to the people. You know, of course, sometimes we are overwhelmed because of the job that we do. The community work is not that simple. So when we feel that uh, we have taken a lot in our brains, we are stressed, we just go to the seafront and you look at the ocean. And this process really heals what's going on in your mind. We might lack resources, but we have the courage, the audacity and determination to continue fighting. My country, Uganda, it is enriched with a lot of natural resources. 90% of Ugandans depend on agriculture. Land is, it's part of us. My name is Tonigwe Irene, and I work with um, Women for Green Economy, Movement Uganda. In 2016, it's when the first oil was discovered in Uganda. Before that, everyone was living peacefully. The East African crude oil pipeline, it is going to be the longest heated pipeline from Hoima in Kabale to Tanga in Tanzania. As Ugandans, we are seeing it as a climate change boom because it has increased increased or contributed to the climate change impacts. Destruction of forests, loss of biodiversity, loss of livelihoods. The government leaders, the oil companies, are really enjoying the foreign money and vulnerable communities. And us as communities, we are really suffering the consequences. Uh, from 2017, they came, those oil projects, uh, they passed through our land. Uh, when they passed through, actually they stopped us from using the land. Like for us, we, we do cultivate, eh? I swear, it is the, our source of income. Uh, when we stopped you from using the land, they promised it, ah, we are going to pay you, then you will maybe buy another land. Uh, from that year, 2017, they just, some of us, they paid us in this 2023. You imagine that, those years, hey, because for us we thought, ah, since the project, the oil and the gas project has come, we are going to be rich, we are going to buy better lands, big lands, but instead, it is vice versa. We are suffering, can I say, yes, we are suffering. People now are, are, are really crying out to the government and oil companies to come and prove justice to them. It really pains me to find out that uh, the developed countries are really discussing the issues of Africans. Yes, we have our resources, but we are excluded in making decisions on them. Instead of us Africans speaking on our own behalf, speaking with experience how these fossil fuels are affecting us and what we need as alternatives, make una know they cut down all the trees where they on a farm. Una they here? Yeah. You know say before this place na real forest, Abi. Uh -huh. And better, better animals. As rain they change, Una too go know how Una go na house. No. This community has large deposits of coal, and there was coal mining in this community in the past two years. We mobilize the communities to let them understand the impact of coal mining on their land. 
these women stood to their right and they were able to halt the coal mining in the community. When I started, there were 10 women and now there are 80. So that's big change. The women, they know how to organize themselves. In many of the communities that I work, you may not have men association, but you will always find women association, women organization. They are not doing it for the benefit of a few, like some of the men do. With that quality and what they do, they are able to protect the environment, they are able to start small businesses, empower their children through school, and keep on passing that very important knowledge. What is lacking in powering the continent of Africa is finance. And that finance is available. All that is needed is to channel that money from fossil fuels into renewable energy. Renewable energy actually, statistically, scientifically, is improving. That provides more jobs than fossil fuel industry. With a huge population of people without power, you train many people with skills in renewable energy, then you bridge that gap very quickly. Yeah. One of the things that is lacking to solve climate change is the lack of political will. Before now, it used to be us civil society organizations versus the policy maker. And this results in protests, which never yields any results. Another approach is to build that relationship through which we lobby the policymaker to make laws that will help solve the climate crisis. I want to go far, and that is why I'm working with other activists to ensure that we keep the call for climate justice in Africa and will continue pushing as long as it takes. We must get justice. <laughs> I need to wake up. <laughs> In nature, there is the symbiotic relationship that occurs between all the entities within an ecosystem. We have kept ourselves apart, and that is why our ecosystems are destabilized. Indigenous knowledge has been passed on from one generation to another. So this rural people, life is really simple. They understand how trees relate with water, how trees relate with the atmosphere. That is indigenous knowledge. They understand it. But we bring our big terms. We bring climate change jargons. We bring environmental jargons and tell them indirectly, you don't know nothing. There should be space for them at the table, whether they went to school or not. And their indigenous language, their indigenous knowledge should be appreciated because it is from there that whatever concepts we have today have been built. Yay! Okay, so the plant, these are some Since the 1880s, when Africa was experiencing a lot of colonization, we have grown and we thought we are now in post-colonialism period within Africa. Unfortunately, we are still colonized. This is affecting the way we live. It is even affecting the way we think 
and the decisions we make because our decisions are no longer ours. We have to make decisions that are favorable to the Western world. We cannot live under this form of slavery, mental slavery in a modern time. Finance from fossil fuels can be directed and should be directed to solving African problems. Young people within Africa will be able to have African-led solutions to problems within our environment. And this is possible if we give opportunities for young people to identify the uniqueness in African knowledge, the uniqueness in indigenous knowledge, and the beauty in innovation, and also create opportunities for themselves and other young people within the African terrain. We've spoken for too long. We've built a lot of ideas. We have a lot of things stuck up in our heads, but we've not taken enough action. That is why we are all called to use our hands and our hearts to engage in our communities, to engage with nature, to take action, and to make sure we are not just talkers, but action takers. Les femmes sont, sont des championnes en matière de résilience climatique parce que très tôt, elles ont mis en place des solutions endogènes, des solutions qui permettent carrément de, de, de pallier aux effets euh, du changement climatique, leur permettent de continuer à avoir des ressources euh, à, à transformer pour leur subsistance. Mais aussi, ça contribue fortement à la protection de l'environnement. Mais cela... Ne, ne bénéficie pas seulement aux femmes, cela bénéficie aux, aux communautés entières, cela bénéficie au pays. C'est des femmes fortes, c'est des femmes leaders, elles, elles représentent quelque chose, elles font quelque chose pour leur communauté. Et le fait d'un seul coup de me retrouver dans cet environnement-là, c'est une prise de conscience personnelle pour moi. Être en contact des communautés, euh, les appuyer, vraiment les accompagner à, à s'affirmer quand il est question de, de combat pour le respect de leurs droits. <rire> Quand il y a un problème au sein de la communauté, la plupart du temps, nous, on vient, on les trouve en train de chercher des solutions. Il faut essayer de voir maintenant ces communautés-là, comment ils voient le développement, eux. On ne peut pas juste faire du copier-coller, on ne peut pas retranscrire le modèle de développement étranger en Afrique. Ça ne marche pas. Depuis l'indépendance des pays africains, ça n'a pas marché. C'est toute l'Afrique qui souffre de ces, ces projets-là. Donc il est temps d'arrêter cela, il est temps vraiment de, de repenser le modèle de développement africain. Et cela exclut le financement des énergies fossiles et cela doit passer par une transition énergétique juste et équitable. Historically, 
the voice of the women have not been heard. Our religions restrict women to take charge in matters of social justice. We have uh, come together and formed our own organization and we are advocating for climate justice because I think everyone knows that uh, women are nature and nature is women. I've invited 60 women to come here and talk about climate issues. It is important to do these meetings because uh, it's an avenue of uh, sharing information, learning, and also showcasing what others are doing. When you bring women together, they learn so that they can fully participate and make informed decisions. We are at a place called Lamu Polytechnic. This is a village polytechnic where our youth come here to, uh, to learn about uh, skills of doing business. Education is a very powerful tool. It's a change agent. And each and every person should get access to education. So it is uh, very important for them to witness themselves with their own eyes that uh, if you want it, then you can make it. The people that we bring to them are people who are born here, raised here, and now they are very powerful people in the society. So this really inspires them. Catching up with the situation, it is really so tiresome when you are doing it alone as a woman. We made sure that they come together as a corrective, they come together as a movement. They cannot fight this battle alone. They have a lot of groups of women within the oil affected communities so that they share as women, they share struggles and at the same time they share the strategies on how to overcome these challenges. We train women to know that um, they have a voice. They know their environmental and land rights. My hope is to really empower them to remain strong and to give them skills to start up their environmental friendly businesses that can really empower them financially. And empowering a woman financially doesn't mean that you are empowering only a woman, you are empowering the community, you are empowering the country at large. Whether we speak and speak and speak, we are not going to gain anything. All these years, we have been making policies, but they are not being implemented. What I really want to see now is actions. This is the time for us as Africans to really transit uh, from the fossil fuels economy uh, to regenerative economy. What do I mean here? Regenerative economy is where man, land, people live together happily. I'm very optimistic as Africans in solidarity, we can achieve the generation of regenerating economy we want.
you have the power to change everything about yourself. But that is very, very hard. Imagine trying to change others or the situation your country is in. Thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. Never go backward. Attempt and do it with all that you have. When you start to develop empathy and imagination, the whole world opens for you. You only have power over people so long as you don't take anything from them. But when you have robbed people of everything, they are no longer in your power. They are free again. La société civile doit être écoutée. Les communautés avant le profit. Power is not a blessing in itself, except when it is used to protect the vulnerable. Power has only one duty, to secure the social welfare of the people. Truth is powerful and it prevails. We must end the fossil fuel era. Power to the people. The only way to predict the future is to have the power to shape it. Don't be afraid After the darkness is light So don't you be afraid When it comes along Get through.